The Tom Woods Show, episode 994. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Men, get yourselves an excellent shave at an outstanding price with Harry's and get your $13 trial set for free. Just cover shipping. Check it out at harrys.com slash woods. Hey everybody, Tom Woods here. John Moody's back with us. John is our expert on food, freedom, government, agriculture, farming, you name it. And he's back with a brand new project called Stetter.com that I thought would be interesting to talk about for what it tells us about the changing nature of education in the age of the internet. And I thought we'd also catch up with him a bit on freedom, government, food, all these sorts of things. And uh, Stetter.com is where you want to go. It's like Homesteader, but Stetter, S-T-E-A-D-E-R.com. And let's talk to John. John, welcome back. Great. Thank you so much for having me, Tom. I want to talk about Stetter, which is one of these great marvels of the world in that we couldn't even have imagined it 20 years ago, and now here it is. But first, I'd like to get an update from you, given that this is not an area I tend to keep an eye on. I, I, my eye is only so large and it only takes in so much at a time. So I rely on you to tell me what's going on in the world of farming and food and the state. So bring me up to date on any items of note that I should be aware of, I and the listener should be aware of. Oh, wow. So anything of note, it's been a real interesting few years in terms of food and farming. Um, the, the growth of meal services, Amazon acquiring Whole Foods, um, just the kind of the rapid changes to, to the kind of food distribution marketing machine um, has been something to watch uh, and, and to see, you know, just how competitive food is becoming and the amount of money being thrown into the food industry. I was reading an article a couple weeks ago, and venture capital companies are throwing something like half a billion dollars a year into meal startup ventures. Um, just massive amounts of money being tossed around at the moment um, in the food industry and, and driving a lot of change. Um, so, so that's just one fascinating aspect of what's going on. The, the government's been you know, somewhat quiet other than spending billions of dollars of our tax money um, on the same old, same old regulatory nonsense and cheap food subsidies. Um, so we'll kind of see if anything, anything new is coming down that pipe. But it's been a relatively quiet year overall. In, in good news at the state level, um, there's a number of states that continue to make really good progress pushing for um, immense rollbacks in the in the regulatory state at, at the state level in terms of food and farming. Um, so I think we talked about previously that Wyoming was the first state to adopt a um, kind of food freedom legislation. And in really great news out of Wyoming, because, you know, all the naysayers – and the nanny staters, they say, you know, like, oh, you let these people make food and sell food freely. There's going to be all these illnesses and all these people are going to die and it's going to be so bad. And Wyoming, it appears, has actually had decreases in their annual number of foodborne illnesses and other stuff. Um, and at the very least, there's been no increase. Um, even though they passed this doomsday legislation to, you know, let you make a pie for your next door neighbor without Uncle Sam having to take a slice. Um, so, so that's really good news because other states are watching and states that have good early results, it makes it easier legislatively to get other states to buy in. Let's talk about Stetter, which is the reason I wanted to talk to you today. Uh, this it's Stetter as in Homesteader, just without the home. So Stetter dot com is that the site? Yep, exactly. All right. So we're we're thankful to find that domain. That's um, amazing. Yeah, because these days to find a good dot com is like a needle in a haystack, and you really. It's not like you can't function with a .us or a .net, but <laughs> there's something slightly shady about you when you have that, so it's really <laughs> great if you can find what you're looking for. And f for my sake, by the way, in my case, 
I just can't believe I found things like supportinglisteners.com, which is just my donation site. Why was that available? That's a beautiful name. That was just sitting there. Occasionally, you have a real beautiful find and stetter, especially given it's seven letters. To find a sevenletter.com that's still available, congratulations. That's hurdle number one. Yeah. What's great about it is what this thing is all about and, and what it means for our future, really, because in the old days, if you wanted to learn something, no matter what area it was, there was the formal, official route you went, and it cost you a fortune, and it was inconvenient, and you hated it, but that was what you had to do. And suddenly, almost overnight, we've been liberated from this in so many different fields, and now Stetter is doing it for your field. Yeah, and and we're really excited because for people who want to learn skills in homesteading or farming, the options can be challenging in the sense of you can go to conferences, you know, you can go to formal educational institutions who often what they're going to teach you is highly problematic, especially if you're more organically or naturally minded. Um, or you know, so you can travel around the country to catch conferences or you can travel to people's farms and stuff. And, you know, the on-farm training is often really great. Joel Salatin does a tremendous job with his on-farm training. But if you live in the middle of the nation or on the West Coast, going all the way to the East Coast is both time and financially costly. And if you want to learn a number of different skill sets, trying to make it to different farms and different regions of the country is going to cost you an arm and a leg in so many different ways. And we were watching things like Masterclass and Treehouse and begin to think, could we do something like this for homesteaders and farmers? Could we offer them really, really high quality content at a very reasonable price that would they would just look at and say, oh, this just makes such good sense? So give me an example of the kind of thing that I might learn there. Well, we're hoping over time that it will cover just about every possible topic you would ever want to know. So whether you want to learn about growing stuff in raised beds or you want to learn particular crops like garlic or sweet potatoes or tomatoes, or if you want to learn how to keep bees both in traditional hives or in kind of newer iterations of beekeeping um, like top bar hives and other things, um, we hope to have classes on foraging, especially classes that deal with different regions of the country so that no matter where you are, you can learn about foraging for food and hunting for food. Um, we hope to have entire tracks of classes covering all sorts of homestead skills, such as you know heating your house with wood or overall um, homestead design. You know, If you're just buying a piece of land or looking at buying a homestead, how do you design it to maximize its fruitfulness and its efficiency and its value um, while also minimizing your labor and work and costs in the process. And, and that's the beauty about this topic in this field is there's no lack of subjects and classes and courses we can offer over time so that there'll always be something new and something interesting to benefit subscribers to the platform. I like what you've got there right on the homepage at Stetter.com. Just as clear as day exactly what it is you're offering. We find the leading experts and spend the day on their farm or homestead, capturing their workshops on video and delivering their knowledge and experience to you. Now, for people who are looking for that kind of knowledge, that is amazing and it's going to be extremely valuable. But even for somebody like me, for whom this is not part of my lifestyle, I still am amazed. I stand here in awe that that's possible, that you can go and for a day be with somebody who knows an awful lot, capture that knowledge and convey it to a potentially unlimited audience. How can you how could you not be excited about that in principle? Oh, it's amazing because, again, you know, you think about the cost of college or other educational options. One of the other things that inspired us to do Stetter was, you know, a bunch of us already speak at some of these conferences. And if you want to go to a conference, you know this, I'm sure, from your experience. You know, you're looking at four days of hotel and food. So right there, you're looking at anywhere from three to six hundred dollars. 
You have your travel expenses. That can be another 200 to $600. And then you have the cost of the conference itself, which can be anywhere from, you know, 50 bucks to $500 or more. So just to attend a conference, you're looking at a four figure outlay um, and losing four days of time as well. And a lot of these conferences, what you're going to get is a bunch of sometimes mediocre, sometimes fairly good static PowerPoint presentations for, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. Whereas, you know, with something like Stetter, we can give you multiple hours of beautiful cinematography from a really gifted, vetted instructor in a particular area for basically the cost of a couple cups of coffee for the entire month, you know, for something that's competitive with Netflix, um, you know, one tenth of the cost of going to a conference, you can have an entire year of dozens and dozens of classes to choose from is our goal. And I'm looking again on the homepage and you're discussing the range of topics that people will ultimately be able to get a hold of. And you've got it's, it's a diverse array of things. It's backyard beekeeping, raising heritage breeds, heirloom vegetable gardening, a whole lot of stuff. Now, that so, so Stetter.com is the site pe- people should check out. It's, uh, again, it's a miracle of the, of the times we live in. We, we have a lot of reasons to complain and be frustrated. But at the same time, this would not have been believed by anyone. 50 years ago. It's not that it would have been amazing to them. It would have been, I must be dreaming. Such a thing can't happen. And yet here it is. And that's just amazing. We, we, do, we do not pause often enough to appreciate what we have. Now, let me uh, switch gears a, a bit for a moment and ask you, given that you are involved in this kind of subject matter, and you're very interested in food and farming, there are no doubt a lot of people you encounter who have the same interests that you do, but who, let's say, from a policy standpoint, would disagree with you very much, would be inclined to think that what we need is uh, the state as a steward of these things, as an overseer, as a guarantor of quality or whatever. And yet you have a very different view. And how do you how do you deal with that difference with others? And how do you justify your what I'm sure is uh, somewhat of a minority view. Hmm. Well, interestingly, you know, in food and farming, especially because of the influence of someone like Joel Salatin, a more liberty minded view, I don't think is quite as small policy wise as in some other parts of the economy and nation and stuff. Um, cause you know, cause Joel has had such a big influence right? and you know, he's a big boat that creates a lot of wake. So he, he's really left a, a, a positive mark on the movement from that perspective. And then, you know, the government, um, through their own actions has certainly been immensely helpful, um, to that line of thinking, because when you see the malfeasance and the foolishness of the government, when you see that every year, you know, um, 20 some billion dollars of our tax money goes basically to a handful of crops that get turned into ethanol and all sorts of other things. And, and you know, basically are, are, are a gigantic bailout to big food and big farm. Um, and have all these deleterious effects on us in terms of our national health and in terms on the economy and stuff. It's it's not a super hard sell an argument for those who are informed. And, and you know you also have the issue of you look at the FDA, you look at the USDA, and who's in charge of these organizations? Well, it's people who used to work for Monsanto, people who used to work for Cargill, people who used to work for Tyson. Um, You know, so you have this revolving door as well that, you know, even the most staunch pro-government people constantly have to cringe at. And and so I try and be very diplomatic and and really very kind and just point out, you know, like on the one hand, you want the government to have all of this power. But look, every time they have this power, it just gets turned against you. It's, it's never harnessed and used in a positive, constructive manner. So why do you keep pushing to empower them? <laughs> right. Um, 
but I think on a previous show with you, I pointed out that for liberty minded people, um, the food and farming issues are one of the easiest, lowest hanging fruits for introducing people to why government involvement in things is so bad and why freedom and, and truly free markets are such an effective and efficient solution on so many levels. And so for, for libertarians who are well informed on these things um, and, and who are paying attention to what's going on nationally, um, you know, because like let's take a state like Maine that I think is relatively blue overall, but but you have a state that in some ways is relatively blue and they have been pushing for food sovereignty harder and longer, I believe, than any other state in the country. And, and that push for food sovereignty, that push to allow people to feed their neighbors is being driven by people who are very progressive, um, including, you know, Ron Hickman, who is an openly homosexual African-American Democrat, either representative or senator in the state of Maine who's championing this. And so this issue is such a great gateway to the issue of broader liberty and freedom, you know, because all of us see the reports of the government, you know, mowing down people's front yard gardens because it's illegal to have a garden in your front yard. Um, and, and even the most staunch big government people just scratch their head and scream at what they see going on that, that you know, this is just insanity. John, let's take just a minute to thank our sponsor. Folks, here's a novel approach. You don't like the price of a product and you think you can do a better job? Buy your own factory and start making it yourself. That's what Jeff and Andy did. They were just two regular guys and they were fed up with buying overpriced razors. So they bought their own German factory that had over 100 years of blade making experience to make sure they would get the highest quality blade. Harry's offers their blades at half the price of the leading five-blade razor. They sell directly to you over the internet, and you're going to love the experience. The product itself is excellent. I've had lots of problems with blades in the past, but I get a beautiful, smooth shave with Harry's. It's a great system overall, which is why when I was looking for a Christmas gift for my old friend Michael Malice, I got him a beautiful Harry's shave set. Well, you can claim your free trial offer from Harry's. It's a $13 value for free when you sign up. Just cover three smackers for shipping, and you get a weighted ergonomic razor handle, five precision-engineered blades with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, a rich lathering shave gel, and a travel blade cover. So to grab that, just head over to harrys.com slash woods. That's harrys.com slash woods. All right, let's swing back to stetter.com for a minute. First of all, how do you define a homesteader? This is not a familiar term to a lot of people. So I think a homesteader is someone who, whether it's on half an acre or five acres or 10 acres, is seeking to be more self-sufficient and kind of more resilient with their life and their resources. Um, you know, so up until last November... Um, you know, I, I had a paying job per se where, you know, I worked X number of hours a week and I got paycheck X no matter what, pretty much. And then, you know, that ended. And for most people, when the paycheck ends, the problems begin and, and the panic sets in. But because our family are homesteaders, um, you know, well, we produce our own heat. So we don't really have a heating bill. And we produce a lot of our own food, so we don't really have a grocery bill. And we get water from a well, so we don't have all of these water bills and, and these other things. And so it's people who don't want to have to always be roped right back into the modern economy and all of its risks and things that it throws at them. You know, so I, I've basically had a year to pursue other projects and other things with little or no stress and disruption to our family because we've achieved a certain level of self-sufficiency that means even if we're not bringing in X number of dollars per month, we really don't have to worry about it. 
Um, and, and I think that's a lot of what drives the heartbeat of a lot of homesteaders. It, it's the ability to produce some of your own food or most of your own food to be able to take care of yourself and your neighbors if things go sideways or if things get hard. Um, and, and to also just, you know, get to develop skills and understandings that the modern world doesn't often appreciate or value anymore. So given the sorts of challenges that homesteaders and farmers face, how does Stetter help them? I mean, what, what, your tip, doesn't your typical farmer already know what he needs to know? How does this help him? Oh, I, I would say no. Given the number of emails and Facebook messages I get every year from people who have really messed up their farms or homesteads in different ways. Um, I, you know, one of the challenges of being somebody who grows food and then sells food is there's there's an idea in in our culture that it's really easy. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's just throwing a seed in the ground or a plant in the ground, or throwing some manure down and throwing some plants in the ground, and and then everything else is like magic. You know, but every spring to summer. I get probably a dozen emails from people who have totally destroyed their gardens through over fertilization or importing herbicides in their compost or in their mulch. Um, so, so it's just it's it's not as easy as a lot of people think. And then couple that with you know, in the the internet is a marvel because in, in you know I can go on Google and type in six words and get 600 articles on a subject. But how do I know which of those are actually correct? So, you know, anybody now can throw up a YouTube channel and they can start talking about, you know, their homestead success and stuff. And a few of us were talking about the other day that, that we know firsthand, like some of these really popular homesteading YouTube channels, um, you know, one of the person's a neighbor with them and sees them actually buying their groceries at Walmart. And they're homesteaders, <laughs> uh, you know. And, and so, with something like Stetter, we wanted to be able to provide a resource where you have really high quality vetted instructors who have years and years of experience and who are really doing what they say and really living this lifestyle in a successful fashion rather than merely trying to profit off the interest you know, that homesteading and farming has currently in the culture. Well, I wish you all the best with Stetter.com. Uh, are you crowdfunding it? Should we talk about that aspect of it? Yeah, so so what we're going to do is in September, we're going to launch a Kickstarter to, to supplement some of the private investment we've had in the platform. Um, so we've had enough investment where we're going to shoot four or five classes just to give people a really good taste and feel for what courses are going to be and feel like. Because, you know, another thing that'll make Stetter unique is, um, you know, rather than having to sit down and watch an hour video or sit through an hour lecture, we're going with the digestible content model. So each class we're calling a path and each path is made up of a bunch of small steps and each step only lasts anywhere from five to 15 minutes. So it, you'll be able to work through classes on your lunch break, if you're trapped in traffic somewhere while you're waiting to pick up your kids from music lessons or soccer practice or baseball. As long as you have access to the internet, you'll be able to take in content um, in a curated, organized fashion um, to help you succeed. And if you have bigger blocks of time, you can work through bigger blocks and stuff. Um, but we are going to, to fund it to get to the next stage of the platform uh, by doing a Kickstarter in September with hopefully some fun rewards for people who want to help us out and see this idea get fully off the ground. All right. So do you have any sense of what part of September that'll be happening? We're going to be launching the first week of September with the Kickstarter. Okay. All right. So in that case, I'm just trying to think of when I want to run this and what episode number this ought to be. Let's see. I don't know. Why am I doing this on the air? <laughs> but I'll, I'll figure it out. It's, it's uh, well, because I need to give people a show notes page. That's why. So we're going to say.
episode 994 okay. to make absolutely sure that we've we've got it so that the timing works for everybody involved. So tomwoods.com slash 994. We will link to stetter.com. And because I, I know John will send me the link, we'll, we'll also link to the, the Kickstarter. If you think this is a worthy project and you're able to contribute to it, well, that's how a free society is supposed to work, isn't it? So, so I'll have both of those things available for you at tomwoods.com slash 994. All right, so now you know the secret of the show that sometimes when I record the first few minutes of the show, it's after I've talked to the person and I already know what number it is at that point. It, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm glad you all know the inner workings of the show now. But uh, <laughs> anyway, that's none of none of John's concern. John, best of luck with this uh, outstanding and very, very interesting project. Man, well, thank you so much for having me. And, and thank you for all you've done to inspire people um, to consider just like the possibilities that innovations and technology and markets make for ideas like this. Well, I appreciate that. I'm glad to do what I can. That's great. Thank you so much for having me. All right, that's going to do it for today. I know I owe a few of you a mention on the show who started websites through uh, tomwoods.com slash publicity. I will get to that, but right now we're dealing with the hurricane situation and the situation, the uh, circumstances are not really ideal, but I will get to that in the coming week, assuming I make it through this ridiculous thing. Thanks for listening, everybody. I, I think, actually, you know what? I may even, isn't it funny in, under these circumstances? I may even have, if I can swing this, a bonus episode this weekend with Katie Wells of wellnessmama.com, who interviewed me on her podcast not long ago. I made that into an episode of this show. And when I was looking into her background, I went to her website because I always want to know who's interviewing me. And so I went to her website. It's amazing the empire she's built. She's got a podcast, a blog, products, a members area. She's an affiliate marketer. She's doing all this stuff. And she listens to my show. So I want to know how she's doing that. That's amazing. I, I mean, I would be impressed if one of my listeners did one of those things. She's got it all working together, and an email newsletter. So everything I recommend, she's doing very, very successfully, and I want to know how. I want to know how she got started, how she figured it all out, what has been successful for her, where she's been unsuccessful. As soon as we started talking, I said, I've got to interview this person for a bonus episode because that that is impressive. So if all goes well, we'll have a bonus episode on that over the weekend. I did skip an episode this week simply because I didn't know what I was going to do about the event, and I was waiting to insert some audio into the episode about what I was going to do about the event, and we just, it was a long story, all the technical details of it, so I ended up missing an episode, but eh, it's okay, it's no problem, I got a bonus one coming this weekend, you're all good. All right, see you later, everybody. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>